Hi, my name's Steve and welcome to the Seaside Allotment Channel and this is the third take of this and I never do retakes but I'm really sleepy. I've just been away on holiday for five days and uh, been doing a lot. So yeah, so this is probably the busiest uh, day of the year so far for us because it's just like a massive harvest day. We're doing harvesting all the beetroot, a lot of carrots, um, quite a bit of fruit and we're also just doing our general uh, weekly harvest, which is, you know, quite a big event as well for us. And then we've got quite a bit of stuff to clear, things like asparagus and stuff like that, and quite a bit to plant as well. So uh, yeah, it's gonna be a pretty full day. And fortunately, as you can see, it's a lovely day. Uh, it's quite cool, but it's sunny. And that's just kind of what you want, isn't it, for working. So uh, I'm going to show you what we're going to get up to and I'll show you the harvests and the stuff that we need to plant. I might actually just go give you a quick look around the polytunnel because we planted that uh, a week ago today and it's coming on quite nicely, I've got to say. So uh, it's really nice to see all your winter veg really starting to uh, spring to life in here. So yeah, let's get on. So let's start with this quick uh, sneak peek at the uh, polytunnel and these are all my reserve seedlings on this little uh, grow bench here and I'm pretty pleased with them. I mean I don't need very many of them but it's kind of nice to have these reserves um, and of course I'll have a few beds start to open up uh, in the next couple of weeks and so I'll be able to pop some of these things in and so it gives me a bit more contingency over winter because that's always tricky. Some nice uh, spring cabbages. This is my uh, first successional sowing of the uh, Durham Earlies. And I can't remember what this one is. Duncan, I think. Uh, so they're looking pretty good, a bit leggy, but obviously they can get potted on uh, pretty soon. Maybe today, if I get around to it. Uh, it's my second succession of um, overwintered veg here so again there's some spring cabbages here and some other stuff that I'll uh, take you through when I do my next sowing and growing video and I've got a few spare brassicas here just in case I had any failures in the polytunnel brassicas but they are all looking pretty good you know when you kind of disturb the plants and um, pot them into the ground they always stall for a few days but uh, I'm seeing quite a lot of new growth on those. So I'm really happy. And the radishes are looking really great. Um, the rocket's coming on. So that's pretty good. All of these lettuces, you know, when you put these lettuces, really leggy kind of lettuces that should have been planted a while ago, all of these old leaves, of course, will get taken off. That's, it's really nice to see these new leaves coming through once those are kind of big enough to sustain the plant a bit like that sort of size i'll take all these rubbish ones off and get them composted and all my little uh, tomato seedlings are starting to come up so uh, i'll get those out and some of those i actually pot on um, and uh, see if i can get something a bit early next year from the, from those because i think these are sun gold which are quite a good one for uh, early veg and these are looking beautiful these are bijou and these are actually ready for harvest already and as I say I only planted them a week ago so that's good and again lots of tomatoes and those are looking pretty good as well and those are freckles so very pleased with those and then here I've just got a few more overwintered things and a few experiments. Uh, there's some rocket there, and some calabrese, marathon, and what's those? All year round cauliflowers, and dazzling blue kale. Interesting. So we've got my carrots. Last courgettes, really these are probably, literally, the last courgettes. 
and these are some overwintering onions these are definitely ready to be planted got plenty more spring onions coming on and when i cleared my pepper beds i've got quite a few of these hot peppers still left chili peppers so uh, i've just potted those on in here just to keep them going There's some more spring onions and some more carrots and then under, under here these are the Grenoble Reds and these are looking great so I'm really happy the ground's still nice and moist so we don't need watering yet um, oh there's one that's been eaten so I've probably got slug and or snail around here somewhere and this is why I have spares because look I've lost another one here so I've definitely got something in here probably a slug somewhere so I'll put just a few pellets down um, just to protect those and get those plants fully really done. And there's my spinach. And yeah, I'm really pleased with that spinach. I can start harvesting a few baby leaves off that for uh, salad mixes. I really like a bit of crunchy spinach in my uh, salads. But these are really intended to grow as uh, nice big plants for cooking greens. So saw those Grenoble Reds that uh, had been eaten. Fortunately, a nice big tray of uh, Grenoble Reds ready to take their place. Right. Today is really about the bulk harvests and one of the bulk harvests that we're doing is peppers. And we grow the peppers in these little hoop tunnels and that was the one that we harvested last week and we replanted with spinach and Debbie's just clearing this one and Quite nice harvest there. We had uh, spring onions, chilli peppers and sweet peppers in this bed. There's quite a few more to and go. We're processing the last of the onions today. And so we've got these, we've got those there and those there. And then we've got quite a few more in the shed, which I'll show you when I go around to that plot. Checking a few of my beds. And as you can see here, I've got another two lettuces that I've lost. And so again, these are Grenoble Reds, so plenty of spares. So one of the jobs for today is just to clear this bed. We've got a few carrots, straggly carrots at the end there. Those spring onions obviously are staying. And we've got a few lettuces not eating quality. And so get rid of that. And that's going to be replanted as an onion bed for overwintering. We've got some lovely spring onions in here mixed in with the lettuces. Coming on very nicely. So this is the main crop beetroot bed and there's a nice mix of different varieties here and these are all being harvested for storage. I'll show you how to do that later. Um, although I've got a video, I'll probably just link to the video where I've done it before. Um, we've got a few other beetroot beds, but those will be left and harvested on an as-required basis. And they'll probably last us sometime into December time, probably. Um, and they'll be harvested from the ground. And so these will just be left in storage. So the idea is that these are nice and big, uh, whereas the... Uh, the ones that we're harvesting as required are much smaller. So I'm going to get on with that. Harvest the leaves into the wheelbarrow and chop those up ready for composting. Harvest the roots into here. And uh, yeah, looking forward to this because once this bed is cleared, this bed is going to be garlic uh, and broad beans in the main. And there's a few leaks we went down the end there and this here is next year's brassica bed and it looks a bit barren doesn't it but if you look really closely here come the field beans and anybody who watches this channel regularly knows that we harvest the field beans all the way through winter and then we leave the roots in um, because they're full of nitrogen for their brassicas and there's last year's brassicas. Need a bit of a tidy up, don't they? And for storage, this is exactly the sort of beetroot that we're looking for. 
it's lovely and also I just popped in a little row of carrots down this edge uh, on the assumption that uh, the carrots and the beetroot wouldn't really uh, conflict with each other and while I'm doing the beetroot Debbie is doing the carrots so I've got to say I'm very happy with this so far because we've had a lot of problems with the beetroot uh, all the red leafed stuff basically with this really bad kind of fungal growth but fortunately these late planted ones so the spring planted ones so yeah the spring planted ones were quite bad and the beets were quite small um, but these that were planted in summer they're not so bad um, they coped a bit better and you can see probably the difference with some of these other varieties are in much better condition. So that's the cylindra harvest and as I said I'm really pleased with that. These are my favourite keeping uh, beetroot but uh, the round ones keep pretty well as well so uh, it's not a problem and those are the not the rejects but the smaller ones that will get eaten first and they're pretty nice as well and we'll probably give a lot of those away is the last year that we uh, can give uh, veg away we can't we're from next year we're not allowed to give veg to food banks or other allotment holders or neighbors or friends or anybody uh, we can only eat the veg within the family so uh, that's a bit of a blow because you know we really like to give veg away but yeah it is what it is so now we're on to the golden beetroot and again very good sizes in the main and as I said the the ones that we're leaving in the ground uh, that are on uh, my plot those are uh, a bit smaller than these so that's the golden beetroot and there's about enough there for two a week for me and Debbie which is about perfect to a week until we harvest next year's crop and obviously we're building up our stack of eat firsts so now we're on to the boltardi and these are pretty gorgeous as well and a lot of people talk about these large ones being woody but in my experience it's not really the case it's not the size it's the time in the ground that makes them woody and because these have only been in the ground since July, I think. No, maybe, yeah, probably July. Um, yeah, they're fairly young. And because they're young, they're tender, even though they're big. But uh, it'll be interesting to test these out and actually see, because that's just the theory. And in this whole bed, we've got two white beetroot with very child-like looking leaves. Uh, so that'll be interesting to try out, whether they're just the wrong beetroot seed mixed in or whether there's some, you know, genetic mutation, I'm not sure, but quite interesting. So there's the bed cleared and I think I've already said it's going to be half broad beans and half uh, garlic. So it's going to be a pretty nice bed. I'm going to put some spent mushroom compost on as a mulch. And then when the garlic and the broad beans come out, which is basically the same time, sort of middle of June, probably time, then uh, this will be back as beetroot and uh, probably carrots. Just got to get all these, these chopped up and composted now. And I'll just show you what we ended up with. So that, that's the eat nows. That's the rounds, the bolt hardies and related varieties. That's the cylindra and that's the burpees golden. So really pleased with those. Easily, easily enough there to uh, keep the family going until next season. So uh, yeah, just got to get those all boxed up and I actually store them in these containers I've got a few more of them um, but I put 
moist uh, wood flakes, pine wood flakes, so it's animal bedding. So you just get it from any animal bedding shop. Just get a bale of it, it's about seven quid or something like that. And uh, you moisten it. So it's, you know, if you squeeze it, you can just get like a drop of water out of it. And, uh, and then you basically plant these into uh, in several layers into the uh, into the moist, moist wood chip and you'll find that any the ones near the top will sprout a little bit well, that seems to be fine we don't worry about that um, and so you get little uh, tender leaves coming off the tops and um, the ones at the bottom obviously keep really well because that's kind of where it's moist really the most moist um, and yeah they just need you know drying a bit and all of this loose soil brushing off uh, the tops are all twisted like that so that and obviously that little bit needs to come off there that uh, but um you don't cut them you just twist them and uh, you just try and make sure that you've got all the sort of fleshy part off like that and you leave the tails on the roots on and just have a check to make sure they're in good condition uh, that's kind of perfect i guess um, any kind of damage to them that's fully healed seems to be fine um, but any kind of deep holes or anything like that i just put them in the use right now box so i think that's everything i need to say apart from perhaps when you um you, you put the moist wood chips in, wood fl sort of flakes really, um, you will probably have to re-moisten them a little bit, um, you know, as the year progresses, because you just want them to keep slightly moist, um, just to keep the beets in tip-top condition. And it's kind of amazing, you know, you can be harvesting these, you know, right through until May um, with good eating quality. So basically I'm clearing the main stems of things like these kale. Um, you know, there's a lot of old leaves here, they're never going to get eaten, so they might as well be taken off the plants and that helps the plants cope with windy weather. And it also gives more space to these which are the purple sprouting broccolis. Um, and I'm clearing the stems of the sprouts and the stems of the kales and I'll just show you what I mean by the cabbage aphid look at that absolutely disgusting I'm going to blast it off with some water but uh, generally speaking they're not too bad the uh, collets are looking pretty good although you know we obviously have been harvesting those at the bottom there um, We've got a few different varieties of clets, so these are just coming. So that's pretty nice. These are the calabrese that we've been harvesting since June, I think. And they are still throwing up side shoots. Every single week we're harvesting these side shoots. And yeah, we've got some beautiful collects but we are starting to get cabbage aphids so we've got to really get this under control and as I say the first step is just taking off these old leaves so everything gets a bit more light a bit more air less places for the snails to hide and less old leaves with white fly on them because it's probably going to be quite a few weeks yet before we get rid of this white fly but i'm quite pleased with these sprouts they're nice and tight and so the white fly aren't really doing too much damage to them really pretty good and these are the late sprouts we had we've been harvesting the early ones for some months now stacks of red cabbages and i'm quite pleased that where i have been harvesting them i'm starting to get these little baby cabbages which is really lovely 
and I've got so much to do that I'm not chopping these leaves up today and I just can't be bothered so I'm just putting them in my Dalek and for every handful of leaves I'm putting in a handful of these composted wood chips arborist wood chips and that's my brown but like any kind of clear up jobs it's always worth it when it's done isn't it everything's looking pretty good a few issues but uh, this brassica red is very important to us as you can see it's got a lot of edge in there that's the end of the day on the allotment and um, we've got a lot done i'm just finishing up a bit of a harvest now there's a big tub of salad a little tub of collets and sprouts calabrese new zealand spinach mixed pepper sweet peppers and chili peppers red cabbages and a few carrots mixed onions and shallots a much bigger container of onions these are good ones and so these have got the tops on for um, binding together into uh, plats a bit of mixed kale some uh, chard a little bit of smoothie mix and what else have we got leeks maybe leeks a few pears uh, a few apples lost of the berries probably and that is pretty much it apart from of course all that beetroot and we've got another one of these containers full of salad that debbie's currently put in uh salad rocket into so I think we're done. Just got to load the car up. Unfortunately, we're not allowed to wash stuff at the allotment anymore. So uh, we have to wash it at home, which is a bit of a pain. But anyway, we'll get on with it. So there we go. Hope you like this video and love to hear your comments, feedback, hints, tips, and all that stuff. And with that, I'll see you soon.